What's something that can mess up your life after only one time? Story 1. Putting yourself in a position to be used again without realizing it while having hopes that most people aren't cruel. A few months ago I was doing BJJ to stay disciplined, and then I spar this guy which we were getting to know each other since I was a dude who thought everyone was my friend, and I was very social. BTW, I'm 15 and this guy is 20, keep that in mind. After BJJ was over me and him talked some more and we exchanged phone numbers, when I got home he texted me and I texted him. I sent him a meme and then he was saying that he's not weird or some shit. I told him thank you for not being sick since a lot of people are. Then he tells me, or am I? I tell him, are you what? He then says nothing. After that, I immediately blocked him because I realized that I got fucking groomed and got used again by people last time. That was truly the moment I lost my hope that most people aren't cruel and that only some are. Well, I was wrong. Most people don't care about you and would use you if they get the chance to. Being groomed just feels strange in an awful way because it makes you feel touchable, makes you feel like a tool, makes you feel powerless. Felt used after vaping for the first time, and while I was buzzed, I got fucking robbed and based off this experience too, along with countless other experiences of indifference and cruelty too, such as being bullied every day in elementary school because of my skin. I truly hate people for life. Story 2. Hey there. One thing that can totally mess up your life after just one time is making a hasty, irreversible decision without thinking it through. Whether it's saying something hurtful in the heat of the moment or making a major financial choice without considering the consequences, it's crazy how a single moment of poor judgment can have long-lasting effects. It's all about taking a step back, breathing, and really considering the potential outcomes before diving in headfirst. Story 3. Being Diagnosed with Asperger's really depends on how you and your family respond to the news. But God help you if you're a child who has a narcissistic parent and you're too young to understand what it means, why one of your parents suddenly starts being mean to you. That's what happened to me about 18 years ago, and now I have irreversible damage to how I see myself. Thanks, Mom. Story 4. Highly underrated comment. Tattoos are pretty much forever unless you want to zap them off and that's painful AF. I've seen it done and it doesn't look pleasant, but they do make some really, really good cover-up makeup for those kinds of tattoos. Can't remember the brand, but it was amazing how it matched the skin tone and covered the whole tattoo up and was waterproof as well. Story 5. Making fireworks, especially flash powder. I saw a good friend mixing Casey Low 3 slash Alu slash MG slash S. The shell went off prematurely and his right hand off above the wrist. Vaporized everything, basically. He had done it 1,000x before but decided not to ground himself and not static guard. Oh, and he almost bled out. Luckily, we were five minutes from ER. Sobering. Story 6. My cousin slept with a girl that told everyone she was 20. She turned out to be like 15 or 16. He was 20. That was in 2010 and he just got released from prison and transferred to a sexual offender rehabilitation facility for the foreseeable future. Then couple of minutes of fun, they had turned into a lifetime disaster for him. Gotta check them IDs if you're not sure, guys. Those women can betrap you sometimes. Story 7 Meth Not even once isn't some cliche, it's the truth. The first time you use meth, you will feel more euphoric, powerful, and energetic than you have ever felt before. The downside of that incredible feeling is that once you start to come down, you will experience some of the worst depression and irritability you could ever feel. You will feel that while having the knowledge that all you have to do to end that depression is use meth again. If you keep using it and not sleeping and draining your brain of dopamine and serotonin, the come down blues will get worse and worse. Eventually, you will fear coming down so much that you just keep using and keep not sleeping and not eating until your brain is scrambled. Your body's resources are depleted and you're addicted. I just hit seven years clean yesterday. I had the kind of addiction that nearly killed me. When I got clean, I had to take responsibility for everything I had done and make some uncomfortable confessions to people close to me to ensure that I wouldn't go back to using again. Please, for the love of all that is good and proper and wholesome, never use meth. Story 8. Identity Theft I just received a letter from my dental insurance company stating they determined my personal information was affected, a.k.a. We don't give a rat's asterisk 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 about our clients, so we did not take proper precautions to protect your information, and they waited until 10 months after all my information, including my date of birth and SS hash, were stolen to tell me about it. My girlfriend just started a petition on that change.org, too, for companies to have strict repercussions like paying fines and having to pay their customers for not taking steps to protect their information. This is the second time in two years I have had this happen. Story 9. 
any number of physical wounds. All it takes is one small bump or cut in the wrong spot, and suddenly you're dead or worse, like some people get hit by cars and get up more or less fine, but you can stumble and bump your head on the ground and suddenly your brain just gives up the ghost. Story 10 LOL Almost everything. Murdering someone, drinking, doing drugs, marrying, having sex. You can get pregnant, which for some people might mean their life's basically over, or contract some STD. Starting a fight with someone, eating. You might choke in something stupid such as a Werther's original. Crossing the street, driving. Story 11. Having your lawyer buy a hooker's silence about having sex with you because it might hurt your presidential campaign, then using campaign funds to reimburse the lawyer, but trying to disguise them as campaign legal fees, and then throwing said lawyer under the bus, even though he knows all of your dirty deeds and then he rats you out. Story 12. Certain drugs, for sure. Had an acquaintance through friends who used to take LSD tabs like they were candy. Was always very disturbed by it. As to me, it was a V-extreme drug. She's now on medication for life and thinks every day is the same day as the day she took a tab and something went wrong. If I'm correct, it's sometime in June 2019. Felt and still feel awful for the poor girl. Lots of us tried to warn her against it and get her help before it happened. Now her parents have a very tight hold on her, understandably, but have also cut all her friends etc. off. Story 13. Meth heroin slash opioids. Hallucinogenics. Seriously. I used to work for a junk removal company, and the guy walks in dressed to the nines looking like a Mormon. Suddenly, he starts freaking out flipping chairs and smashing shit all over. Turns out he's fresh from rehab, and he was abusing LSD slash mushrooms. He had a flashback and was screaming that flame-covered horses and the devil was coming to take him. Had to get paramedics and police to get him out of the office. Story 14. Drinking and driving. My sister and her BF were killed on Xmas Eve, 1990s by a 23-yo female DD running a red light, T-boning my sister's car. DD had two other guys in her car. They both died, too. The DD was the only survivor and only got a broken toe and a 54-year sentence. She's still in prison to this very day. Five lives ruined that day and dozens surviving family members. Four deaths and a near-life sentence for the lone survivor. Please don't drink and drive. It's just not worth it. Story 15. Attempted suicide and failing. I knew a guy who attempted to kill himself with a rifle, missed, and is now minus part of his jaw and his skull. His life has been worse now, his words, because before he just depressed, and now he's depressed and deformed. Story 16. Not wearing a condom on a random hookup. If that girl doesn't like you, she can turn you in for sexual assault and it can ruin your life. Some women only care about themselves and will throw a man, and any woman making a truthful claim about actual assault, under the bus because their feelings were hurt or they are angry. Story 17, a fist fight. If you get hit wrong, you could either die or be left so damaged for the rest of your life that you are no longer able to eat, drink, bathe, get dressed, or go to the bathroom without somebody else helping you. And if you're the one that throws that punch that hits someone just wrong and kills or maims them, you're going to prison. Depending on the circumstances of the fight, you might be there for the rest of your life as well. Don't fist fight unless you absolutely must. A bruised ego isn't life or death, so save actual violence for self-defense. Story 18. Drunk driving. A guy I know had an accident. Rear-ended somebody. Drove away from the accident at high speed. While the P-Thet person chased him. Then broadsided a minivan full of people. Four were pronounced dead at the scene. And one is in critical condition. The driver will probably never see the light of day again. Not sure exactly what the laws are in Ohio. But the U.S. is pretty tough on drunk driving. And so they should be. Nobody should have to pay the price of somebody else being irresponsible. Story 19. While most times I agree with this statement, not always. A permanent solution for a temporary situation, never a great thing. But if a person can logically state their case, pain, disease, etc., then those left behind will definitely grieve. But should others expect a person to remain so that they don't feel pain? But the one in pain must have stoicism for others. Story 20. Using drugs, even weed, as someone with a family history of bipolar and or schizophrenia, had a couple of uncles who developed bipolar after smoking weed. Granted, you can trigger bipolar disorder from getting into a relationship. Apparently, being super happy can cause a manic episode. Still, if you can make it to 25 without trigger bipolar disorder, then you are in the clear. Also, to be clear, weed won't always cause bipolar if you have a family history, but it can so better to avoid it until you are over 25. Story 21. 
choking your wife until she loses consciousness, choke slamming your teenage daughter as she comes in to save her mom while holding a sword ready to end your life. And then, as your daughter lays prone on the floor, you decide to put your wife's nose in your mouth and rip off a nostril. Being the wife in this event and telling the choke, slammed daughter that once he is out of prison, they will be a family once again. Story 22. I've already messed up my life by doing this. When I was 17, I had a heated argument with my father and told him to leave, but later that evening he took his own life. Our argument turned out to be the last interaction he had with anyone in our family. I carry an overwhelming sense of guilt for not saying goodbye properly, as he didn't leave a note. This burden of shame and regret weighs heavily on me every day. Story 23. When I was about eight years old, my dad would forage for wild morel mushrooms and saute them in butter. They were delicious. Sometime later, my dad went out of town and my sister and I decided to go into the forest and pick every mushroom we could find, convincing my very naive mom that we knew the edible ones, and she actually believed us and cooked them for us. I ate a whole bowl, and about an hour later, I was puking my guts out and started hallucinating that a pumpkin was chasing me with a knife. I came out of the trip to my mom slapping me and just bawling my eyes out. For the next year, every few months, I would hallucinate. One of the other vivid hallucinations was that I gave birth to a purple octopus, and it chased me on the beach with a knife. Once again, I woke up to my mom slapping the shit out of me, her attempt to get me out of the trip. When we initially got sick from eating the mushrooms, my mom called poison control, and the poison control specialist said it was a good sign we puked within an hour of eating the poisonous mushrooms. I'm pretty sure my liver is still messed up from this. Very lucky we didn't die, and I am still so traumatized from this experience. My friend suggested I do shrooms to help me through the trauma. Needless to say, I refuse to eat mushrooms to this day. Anybody else accidentally try shrooms at eight years old? Story 24. I'm the single parent of a kid with a horrible, shitty, immature, self-centered, manipulative mother. I've wished a million times his mom was a better, more caring person. But if she weren't his mom, he wouldn't be exactly who he is. And every time I think about regrets in my life, I'm comforted by the fact that if I hadn't done everything exactly as I had, I'd never have gotten to be the luckiest dad in the world. So yeah, you're not wrong. And I suppose you could end up parenting a kid with someone who murders you both or something. But I'd bet money most parents would never trade their beloved children just the way they are for an easier go of it with a crappy co-parent. Even though the choices that led me here certainly threw me for a loop and have made for some tough going, that particular one didn't fuck up my life. It saved it. Story 25. I lost a friend to a speedball. He was in rehab for prescription opiates. It was the early 2000s when they were prescribed candy, and he got hooked. He left rehab. I'm not sure if he was discharged or left voluntarily. Evidently, he couldn't get pills, but was able to score a speedball and died from it, sitting upright against a bed at his friend's house, who gave him the keys after checking his pockets, etc., as the friend was at work and thought he was helping. I've heard from DNA counselors that the high after rehab can be the worst, because your tolerance might have gone down in rehab, but you got to use the same amount once leaving, and your body can't handle it. Not that my friend could have handled less of a speedball, but another consideration.